Hello everybody, this is Tim once again here with my Halloween special review of Halloween 6, The Producer's Cut. Um, this is a really good movie. I'll just go ahead and give my score. I'd give it three stars of a possible four. Uh, this is a really much better version of the film that we got, the theatrical cut. I'm going to go ahead and give a plot summary of this film. I'm not going to go too into detail for it because it's similar to the theatrical cut. But I'll go into detail more on the stuff that's different than the theatrical cut and this producer's cut. So start the film off. We got the opening here with Jamie giving birth. The man in black and everything there, similar to the theatrical cut. She gives birth. Um, they take the baby out of there. Um, Michael Myers shows up. He's going to kill the baby. The nurse that works there is helping her. She escapes. The nurse gets her fucking head shoved on the spike on the conveni conveniently placed spike on the wall. <laughs> but still a good death. I still like it here in the theatrical cut. She gets took out. Um, Jamie, and the, Jamie takes off with her baby. Michael Myers follows after her. Michael Myers kills that same dude that Jamie st steals the truck from, uh, snaps his neck, and you get the bone sticking out. Still a decent death scene, but a little bit too Friday the 13th-ish still in this cut. So he's dead. Uh, she takes off. She goes to that. Uh, she goes to the bus stop. She calls into the Barry Sim show, and that's when you get Donald Pleasance listening in. Oh, when you get Donald Pleasance like, doing a voiceover at the beginning of this movie, which makes his character feel much more in the film, which I like. Donald Pleasance has much more to do in this version, which I really enjoy. His character feels much stronger in this film than in the theatrical cut. And I'm a huge fan of Don Pleasant, so I really enjoy that. And he feels much more like main character in this film. So uh, like you get his uh, voiceover at the beginning of the film talking about like kind of little snippets of like everything that's happened up until now. And uh, you get Dr. Wynn visiting, visiting him like in the theatrical cut. And um, yeah, he listens over the radio and hears Jamie calling in, trying to get help, asking for Dr. Loomis, and he talks about Michael Myers coming back, and then you get a scene, a little, little scene that's not in the theatrical cut where he's, like, suit, suited back up completely. He's, like, unsure about whether or not he should come back to Smith's Grove at first because Dr. Wynn wants him to come back, and then you get him suited back up automatically, like, one second later after he hears Michael Myers is, is alive, so I think that's funny. Since him, since Jamie and Michael Myers have been missing since the end of the fifth film. But, um, uh, so back to the back to where I was in the story. Uh, so Jamie, uh, the same thing as the theatrical cut. Michael Myers is there at the bus stop looking for, her. and you get the original Halloween theme here, and it suits the film much. It suits this version of the film much more. This version get realize realize much more in suspense and has a much more uh, Halloween feel to it, like the first film, uh, and less over the topness. And Michael Myers is less of a Jason clone in in uh, <laughs> this version than he is in the theatrical cut. But, uh, so it's similar to the theatrical cut. Jamie makes it out of the bus stop. She goes, crashes at that, um, that barn. Michael Myers shows up there. Uh, instead of killing her brutally on the farm equipment, uh, he just stabs her and she falls over. He, like, he's, like, coming up behind her and she turns around. Boom, he's gone. And then he appears, like, behind her on the other side and then stabs her and she falls down. You think she's dead, but she's not. And, um, the police show up. They find, they, well, uh, her body gets found and she gets took to the hospital, um, Michael Myers doesn't get the baby, obviously, just like in the theatrical cut. You got Paul Rudd, who's listening in on the same night. Paul Rudd's great here again in the producer's cut. Uh, he's just as good. Um, and then you got Kara and her uh, asshole father, John, who looks like Fred Flintstone still. And you got Danny, and this version of the film makes it clear that they're wanting Danny to be the new uh, carrier of Thorn and to sacrifice his family. And this version of the movie also makes it clear that uh, Thorn, the demon, or whatever you want to call it, is... Uh, is like making things better in the world, but you gotta sacrifice everybody in your family or have someone do it. Um, so it's like you do evil, and uh, he takes away evil if you do evil for him or sacrifice blood to him, kind of like a pagan ritual thing. So it makes it more clear that that is the case in this version. Um, and the whole thing about Thorn and all that, how it, it, I'm still a little iffy on Thorn. It, uh, Michael Myers in the first film is considered to like one day just snapped and became evil on his own. But if you go by Thorne, it's like he was turned evil, and then he slowly turned more and more evil until he became pure evil. So it's kind of whatever you prefer that he turned evil, or he got turned evil by a force he couldn't control, and it built up inside him until he he, he can't control his rage. <laughs> or he just uh, went crazy on his own. Whichever you, whichever you prefer. I prefer him just turning evil on his own. But if you can, I can get past uh, the whole him being turned evil. Because the rest of this film is really good. Um, but yeah, this is a really good version of this story. It's much better than the theatrical cut. 
my opinion, watch four, uh, power through five, do something in the background, watch, uh, watch the producer's cut of six and then be done with it. That's, uh, if you're, a well, I'm, I'm saying be done with it. This is if you're a fan of the Thorn trilogy, four, five, and six, watch the, the producer's cut instead of the uh, theatrical version of part six. But yeah, um, this is a much better version. Uh, girl who plays Kara is still fine. I like her. Uh, the mom, um, I'm not gonna know act. I don't know the actress's name, but she plays like the sweet old lady. Uh, the brother Tim, Kara's brother, he's still a little bit obnoxious. Uh, Danny, he's all right. Uh, um, but uh, you get uh, her father John acting like an asshole, slap her in the face, same shit. And you get the man in black, uh, more like info on that plot of him like getting Danny to try to kill for Michael Myers and shit, trying to get him to go over the edge and commit his first family kill. And he fucking, like, get, you get the scene where he's, uh, remember in the theatrical cut where he, like, holds a knife out at, uh, his, uh, grandpa because he fucking, uh, well, John slapped Kara in the face. In this version, you get the man in black telling him to do it. So that's why he does it. So that goes in better detail, and I enjoy that. Um, uh, and you get Jamie, uh, of course, survives her stabbing. She's in the hospital, and she has flashbacks about what happened to her. Uh, you get more information about what happened to her when she was held captive. And you get a flashback scene to where, uh, at the end of Halloween 5, it's like Jamie's abducted. And they have, uh, they've abducted Michael Myers, too. So it's pretty interesting. That's pretty neat and adds more to the story. Um, and then fucking you get uh, her being, like, tied up in this ceremonial uh, garb, uh, garments. And Michael Myers, well, basically fucks her. He fucks his niece, and she has a... She has a Hitler inbred kid, <laughs> which is kind of weird, but uh, at the same time, I think it fits the tone of this movie because this film is just like, <laughs> it tries to be darker and go back to the Celtic roots and stuff, which I'm fine with, and I think that that, you know, fits the tone of the movie. It's still a little weird for me, but I can get, I can look past it, and they do make it clear in this movie that they want the baby to be the final sacrifice for Michael, because later on in the film, like in the theatrical cut, when they kidnap Kara, and they get her, they got her tied up, and they want, uh, they want Michael Myers to kill the baby, and then they want Danny to kill her to be his first sacrifice, uh, and Michael hesitates, so you, uh, you get the idea more in here, instead of him just snapping, and just all at once killing the cult for no reason, uh, that here, that he doesn't want to actually do these things, and that the cult's forcing him to do these things, and they're trying to, there are worshippers, the cult is worshippers of Thorn in this one, it's not like, uh, they, it's not like they seem to be worshippers, and then they're all at once not worshippers. They are worshippers of Thorn in this one, and they are doing this for Thorn. <laughs> uh, but uh, Michael Myers is powered by the uh, power of Thorn, but it can't. They can't control him, I don't guess, or the cult can't. And uh, you, he, you get the idea that he will snap and kill the cult just because they're making him do shit that he doesn't want to do. <laughs> but Jamie is ki uh, killed at the hospital by the man in black. He just shoots her in the head with a silencer. So it's kind of a more of a peaceful death, but still, I still like that character and would have liked him to do more in the film. So I'm still disappointed in that. Paul Rudd, he doesn't have as many goofy face shots like I enjoyed in the theatrical cut. In this version, he doesn't. Uh, so I kind of missed that a little, but he's, he's still in it enough to where he's really enjoyable. I like the Loomis character actually in this producer's cut more than the Tommy Doyle character. Because Loomis feels more present here than Tommy does. Tommy feels really present in the theatrical cut, but here Loomis feels more main character than... Well, feels more present and feel, has, like, I've already built up love for Loomis because of the other movies, and in here, he's really a sweet old man, and he has more to do here in the producer's cut, so he's more enjoyable to watch for me than Tommy because I already have attachment to him. Uh, you get a scene at the bus stop where Tommy finds the baby. Instead of just finding it random, he finds it because there's a blood trail leading to it, and I'm like, nobody else saw this blood trail? <laughs> uh, but whatever uh, on that one. I can't remember if the blood trail was in the theatrical cut or not, but I don't think it was. But in here, it's like a big, long blood trail that leads all the way to the baby, and I'm still thinking, why nobody see that? But anyway, <laughs> still got Dr. Wynn, turned out to be the man in black. I'm still a little iffy on that. He's still just like an old fart, and I'd still rather it been somebody more, I don't know, more interesting. But they also make it clear here in the producer's cut that uh, Dr. Wynn wants uh, uh, Loomis to take over for him and to be Michael Myers' new guardian so he can retire. <laughs> and he even offers the... You uh, get the scene, well, you get a scene similar to the uh, theatrical cut where he's like offering the, wanting, well, he's wanting Loomis to join him, but uh, it's more fleshed out here. All the stuff in the theatrical cut that was underdone is way more fleshed out here in this version 
which is, makes it really really good. Even if you don't like the idea of Thorn, it's still much better fleshed out and much better done here in this version. But uh, so he wants he tells Doctor Loomis right up front that he wants him to take over for him, <laughs> and Doctor Loomis gets knocked out just like in the uh, theatrical cut, and he's like uh, it's Loomis's office now, <laughs> talking about how he's gonna everything is Loomis's now. So that's kind of fun. Uh, the ending is completely different. No stupid ass flashes of Michael Myers' mask, just like moving in different directions like that, with fucking green shit oozing out of its face. So you don't get that stupid shit. Uh, instead, you get uh, Tommy using magic ruin stones to cancel out the power of Thorn. He puts a bunch of rocks down on the floor and makes like a blood smear. It fucking causes Michael Myers to freeze. I know some people are like Michael Myers defeated by rocks. Ooh, stupid. But it's it's more like every, they've done everything else to him, so magic is really the only thing left that they can do to take this character out, <laughs> or to stop him. But I'm still iffy on one thing: how does he like overpower it and get out of the spell? Because uh, the at the end of the film, Loomis stays because he's got unfinished business, just like the theatrical cut. He goes back in there, and he's obviously I guess going to finish off Michael Myers. He takes off Michael Myers' mask, and it's Doctor Wynn and Myers has switched places with him. And uh, Dr. Wynn grabs him, uh, Dr. Lemus' uh, uh, wrist, and it fucking, the curse of Thorn appears on his uh, wrist, and Dr. Wynn's like, it's your game now, Lemus, and he just falls on the floor and dies. <laughs> and uh, and then you see Michael Myers escaping in the Man in Black's outfit. So that's interesting. So, uh, so it's fucking, so it's like, he's now going to be... Uh, Michael's Guardian, so I find that really interesting, and that would have been cool to see in the sequel. Sadly, we didn't get that. Uh, but as for what we get here, I think it's a very poetic and uh, depressing ending for the character, but it fits the tone of the film really well. It's not as, of course, it's not as good as the ending. For, the perfect ending for the character was in Halloween 2. But here you get a very poetic, depressing ending for the character, and it works for this film and goes really well with it. And I don't mind it. Because it feels earned after so many films with him chasing after Michael Myers. That the evil he's been trying to destroy now he must protect. Which is a ironic twist. <laughs> but uh, I mean a sad one but it still works for the film. You, uh, you, get the, you get the reason answered of why he killed Barry Sims in this version. Uh, that you don't get in the theatrical cut. In this version Barry Sims gets into the wrong, just happens to get into the wrong van. And it's a Smith's Grove Sanitarium van and Michael Myers is in the bank and stabs him. So it makes more sense to why he killed him. And you still get the scene where he puts uh, him up in a bunch of Christmas lights in a tree and his body falls down. That, feel, that scene feels out of place here. I like it in the theatrical cut because that version was more over the top. But in this one it feels out of place because this has a much more Halloween style vibe of the earlier films. And uh, it feels out of place here and too theatrical and comes off a little ridiculous. But uh, it's okay. Uh, and then, but uh, you get a much better uh, death scene for the dad here, the asshole guy, John, Fred Flintstone looking motherfucker. Uh, instead of his head exploding when Michael Myers stabs him into the jukebox, uh, juice box, he fucking just, just gets electrocuted and dies, which is so much better than his over-the-top head explosion, which is ridiculous. <clears throat> but I like that. I enjoyed that. Like I said, you get more scenes of Danny having nightmares and stuff like that about the man in black stuff. So it makes it much more fleshed out, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, this is a really good film. It's easily a solid three-star film out of a possible four. It, I would say that it's the uh, third best film, well, fourth best film in the series. After uh, part part one's the best, uh, th uh, four, uh, four would be the second best. Three, three, uh, two, I almost said three. What the fuck's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, two would be the third best, and this would take fourth place. Um, but all together, those films right there are those are the best films in the Halloween series. Period. I mean, it's <laughs> maybe you like the other films, or you have different tastes in the films. That's fine, but. For me, those are the best films in the, this this franchise period, and the producer's cut of this film is great, and I really like it. And it's a shame it hasn't been officially released, which is utter bullshit. I don't know why. Why the fuck can't they just release this officially? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure why they can't release it officially. And this is a much better send off for Donald Pleasance for his final film than the shitty ass theatrical cut was. So this deserves to be released officially. And I would love to listen to a commentary on the official version about what the director thinks about how his, his version was chopped all to shit. But uh, this is a really good movie. It's easily a three-star film out of a possible four. Uh, the suspense and everything is played much better in this one. Any problems with the film? Um, the guitar riff, I kind of missed it in some scenes in the film. I think it fit a little bit. Um, I think it fit pretty good in some scenes in the theatrical cut. 
but I do prefer the Halloween theme in this one. I like the scene where he's killing Beth in the Myers house, uh, and he's stabbing her in the back like a, in slow-mo, and it's got that uh, creepy score playing. It's got that creepy score playing. I really like that there, but uh, in this version, it doesn't uh, really slow down and focus in on Michael Myers when he's stabbing her in the back like a hacking her. Instead, he's just like hacking her with a Halloween theme playing, and that's just okay. Uh, I preferred the version in the theatrical cut, and when uh, Kara discovers the bodies of Tim and uh, Beth underneath the blanket in the Myers house, and she lifts up the blanket, and there they are laying. It's got like that creepy uh, uh, sound playing, like <laughs> like a scream type voice. I'm trying to imitate it, but I can't get it off right. But people who've seen the movie know what I'm talking about for that scene. Who've seen the theatrical cut, but uh, I missed that there too. I thought that fit and was more creepy. But um, all in all, though, other than that, everything's fleshed out much better here in this version. And the Noel Pleasance is in way more of the movie, and his scenes are fleshed out more. And you get seen with him talking to, like, the sheriff of Hattonfield. Because the, the Mark of Thorn is, like, on the barn or whatever, in the barn where uh, Jamie was stabbed. And the sheriff's like, everything's been quiet for so long. We just want to pretend like Michael Myers is dead and, not, and he's not back and keep the town calm or whatever. <laughs> so, um... I didn't get too in, like, with the whole plot summary of the movie. I jumped around because I just wanted to explain a little bit because... It's almost the, it's really similar, a lot of stuff is to the theatrical cut, but everything's just more fleshed out, and uh, the big differences you get in the film, like the cult is actually a cult of Thorn, they do worship Thorn, so that's that's better here than it was handled in the theatrical cut, and the other flashbacks with Jamie and stuff that you get is really cool, and uh, you get more like fleshed out with the whole Danny subplot, and that the man in black does actually want him to be the new Myers, or the new character of Thorn, which is really cool. So yeah, for this little for this uh, for this film, it's a solid three star film out of possible four. I really like this film. I really enjoyed it, and it's a much better way for the Donald Pleasance character to go out. And I gotta say, if uh, if they had to give some explanation for why Michael Myers has the abilities he does and why he kills like he does, this is uh, pretty. This is at least a better fleshed out version and a better way to do it. So I'll see you guys again with the first Friday the 13th review. You fuck motherfuckers, this be Big M here with his one last shout out for his final film that's being reviewed by that bitch Tim. I just want to throw one last shout out for my fucking movie here. This be the producer's cut, the theatrical cut is fucking amazing as is. But let's jump into this motherfucking producer's cut here. E, I know I may fuck my niece in this movie. I just want the bitches to know though that Myers don't roll like that. Myers prefers to keep it out the family. Except for the strangulations. But the Myers prefers to keep the sex and the fucking out the Myers family. But the strangulations are okay. I kind of get off on those though too. But don't tell anybody about that. They don't have AA meetings for fucking coming while you're killing. But I just want to say I got a little guest here with me that wants to share his thoughts on the film too. And I like to hear what this motherfucker got to say. Because he's gangster up in my hood as well. And he's been hanging with me. Even though my movies be better than this motherfucker's. He wants to chime in on his shit. So let's hear what the fuck he got to say while he at it. Come on motherfucker, come in here. Hello, I'm Chucky. I think this movie fucking amazing. You heard it first here, man. Even that fucking doll loves this shit. How you turn this motherfucking thing off?